In order to guarantee full understanding of this course, you should have completed previous Universal Molding Modules, MU1 Introduction, MU2 Fundamentals, MU3 Molding with Graphs, MU4 Material Morphology, MU5 Press Calculations, MU6 Injection Unit Calculations, MU7 Cooling Calculations, MU8 Rheology, MU9 Injection Speed, Remember that your objective should be to identify the requirements of your process and attend those needs with well-thought-out solutions. Universal molding is a discipline that promotes a structure of organized events. Once again, remember that before performing a universal molding laboratory, you have to do molding from the desk. All auxiliary equipment should be properly installed and correctly operating. Temperatures water temperature, injection barrel temperature profile and its corresponding melt temperatures, heat zones if the mold has hot runners, etc., should already be reached. Barrel adjustments, recovery and transfer positions, decompression, recovery speed, etc., should have been programmed. The proper nozzle tip should have been installed. The required closing force should have been set. The platen openings, their movement, speeds, and mold protection should have been carefully and precisely adjusted. Extended cooling time should have been set. Remember that cooling time is set higher than required in order not to interfere in the determination of the other previously adjusted parameters. Cooling time will be optimized at the end. The ideal injection speed should have been determined, adjusted, and should be filling over 95% of the required fill for the mold. The injection pressure limit should have been determined and adjusted. The pack stage should stay off. Important. The equipment should only be operated and or adjusted by qualified personnel who have read the operational manuals of the equipment and have mastered the equipment's functionality. A multi-cavity mold increases productivity when manufacturing plastic parts. However, its fabrication as well as its operation is complicated. The melt flow's path must be balanced and cooling the mold is more elaborate. Imagine a multi-cavity mold with distinct fill times for each cavity or with some cavities that fill before others. This situation defeats the objective of maintaining a constant flow and viscosity per cavity. It's like accepting the molding of distinct parts for each cavity. In this course, we will discuss the effect of injection time on fill balance, balancing the fill, thermal unbalance, unbalanced fill in molds with cold runners, the effect of injection time on fill balance, in a previous MU course, Determining Injection Speed, we mentioned the effect of injection time on the fill. Do you remember? In the injection stage, the volume of melt in the parts increases with an increase in injection speed. Fill balance will be affected in the same manner. In order to understand this, try the following exercise. One of the illustrations of incomplete fill represents the results of fast fill. The other one represents the results of slow fill. Indicate the probable results by dragging the words slow and fast to their corresponding illustrations. Then press continue. Let's see why. Let's take a look at slow fill. When filling begins, the flow is divided between both sides of the sprue. Melt flow will always prefer the path of least restriction. Because of this, it will continue in a straight line and not turn into the first intersections where the runner branches out. Once it reaches the end of the main branch of the runner and is forced to turn, it prefers filling the previous intersection since the melt pressure will be greater at that intersection. Now, once the melt reaches the first gates, it encounters the restriction of those narrow openings. The melt will prefer to continue flowing through the unfilled runners since it is the path of least restriction, until it encounters the same difficulty, the restriction of small gates. Now there's a contrast because the melt in the exterior gates has less viscosity than the melt situated at the interior gates, which has already been in contact with cold metal for a longer period of time. As a consequence, the exterior cavities will be filled first. During injection, the melt in contact with the cold metal is the first to harden, 
and the thickness of this hardened layer will depend upon the amount of time the melt is in contact with that cold metal. When injection is slow, the hardened layer is thicker, and consequently, the melt path is narrower. Mentally go through the same exercise, this time assuming that the flow is fast. Initially, the runner will fill in the same manner as before. The difference is that the time that the melt sits in the first runners is less. Consequently, its viscosity will stay low and the melt will prefer to fill the interior cavities since the required pressure will be less. Injection time has a lot to do with the balance of the flow. Because of this, the injection speed must be determined and set before carrying out a study of flow balance. Balancing the fill. In this section, we will see the procedure for verifying whether or not the flow is balanced. 1. Adjust the injection unit to produce incomplete parts. Verify that the pack is still turned off. Why run the experiment with incomplete fill? It is a simple way of evaluating the individual fill of each cavity. If more than one cavity completely fills, it would be impossible to determine the fill difficulty between the cavities. How incomplete should the fill be? Try to achieve a fill of 80%, then verify that each cavity is incomplete. If any is not, then reduce the recovery volume even more and verify again. 2. If the parts are not degated from the runners, separate them. 3. Weigh the parts separately and identify them with WI. I equals 1 to the number of cavities. Add all the weights WI and call this sum WT. 4. Determine the volume deviation of each cavity, VD sub I. Volume deviation is equal to WI divided by the average weight of all the cavities minus 1 multiplied by 100, where I is equal to 1 to the number of cavities. If the determined percentage is 0, the flow is ideal. If it is positive, the flow is higher than ideal. If negative, it's lower than ideal. You should normally try to maintain this percentage below 10%. Verify what the permitted deviation is for your company. Example. This data demonstrates a negative deviation in cavities 1, 4, 5, and 8, indicating that they are the last ones to fill, and a positive deviation for cavities 2, 3, 6, and 7, indicating that they are the first to fill. You should construct a column graph with the results. Observe the graph. Thermal unbalance. It is good to have and understand the mold cooling water flow diagrams. Cooler cavities tend to harden the plastic more quickly and, as a consequence, make the flow more viscous. Some companies use infrared systems to determine their mold's thermal distribution. Previous courses mentioned that the temperature of metal, plastic, and water are usually distinct. Though the temperatures of water and metal are not the same, they are related. In the case of hot runners, the flow by zone can be corrected by changing the temperature of the hot drops of the runner system. For example, in the case of a negative deviation of volume, the temperature of this hot drop should be increased. Be careful not to overheat the plastic in the drops. In the opposite case where the deviation of volume is positive, the temperature of the hot drop should be lowered. Be careful not to cause the plastic to solidify in the drops. Why should I avoid allowing the plastic to solidify in the hot drops? Very good question. If the temperature is very low, it will freeze the hot gate and plug it. It is important to understand that a change in the flow of one zone will affect all the other zones. Because of this, we recommend making one change at a time and injecting new parts. Does this procedure work with hot runner systems that include gate valves? Of course. Just make sure that the valves remain open during the injection stage. When the system is so unbalanced that it cannot be corrected thermically, the correction will be made with tooling. Unbalanced fill and molds with cold runners. A correction is not so simple in the case of cold runners, since controlling water flow and its temperatures could be a mold design problem. For example, cavities with a positive value for deviation of volume could be receiving less cooling. There may possibly be an obstruction in the water passages. Cavities with a negative value for deviation of volume could be receiving more heat removal. It could be that the water passages are incorrectly connected. Runners that distribute melt to cavities with a negative deviation of volume could be enlarged to ease the passage in these cavities. Important. 
This practice should only be performed by experienced tooling technicians who know the proper techniques. Let's review. You have completed this lesson.